Hi, my name is Connie Clarnas and you're watching the video Alphabet Patterns Clinical Investigation. In this video, we'll be discussing the clinical investigation that you will perform in order to diagnose an alphabet pattern. So this follows on from uh, gaining an understanding of what are the characteristics of AV patterns. Now we're looking at how do we go about clinically assessing and measuring the AV pattern. So when we're performing an ocular motility uh, assessment on a patient, what we want to do is detect and measure any alphabet patterns present. And here I have AV patterns because these are the most common um, that we'll see, but it could be any alphabet pattern. The other thing you want to do is see if you can find a possible reason for the pattern if this is possible. We haven't talked about etiology of AV patterns. This is in the next video. And here you'll gain a better understanding as to what you're looking for during this clinical investigation in order to perhaps determine a possible diagnosis or sorry, a possible reason as to why the patient has an alphabet pattern. And finally, what we want to do is determine whether the pattern that we've detected uh, needs to be clinically managed. And clinical management relates to surgical management in relation to um, AV patterns or alphabet patterns. So we'll discuss this more when we get to the video on the management of alphabet patterns. Okay, so one of the things that you'll do initially in your clinical uh, examination of a patient is observe if there is an abnormal head posture. So in relation to alphabet patterns, generally patients will have a chin up or chin down to accommodate or um, to provide themselves with BSV in a particular position. So if we have a look here to the right, um, the patient we have here, we can see that when the patient is in prior position, they prefer to adopt a chin down position. And so they want to have their eyes up. And if we look at their ocular movements, we can see that in prior position we have an ESO, in down gaze we have an increase in the ESO, and in up gaze we have a decrease in the ESO. So what we have here is a V ESO pattern, and the patient wants to get their eyes into up gaze where alignment is achieved and where BSV is achieved. If you want to check the patient has BSV in up gaze, you can give them a BSV test, um, whether it be stereo, stereo acuity or Babylon hysteroid glasses. Tests like that will confirm to you that the patient is achieving BSV in up gaze. So clearly one of the first things you'll do is have a look at the abnormal head posture and see if it relates to an AV pattern that you may detect uh, on ocular motility testing. The first indicator that there is an AV pattern will be the abnormal head posture, but then also that ocular movements assessment. So when you're assessing the patient uh, on ocular movements, you always conclude your uh, ocular movement assessment by looking at up gaze and down gaze and looking for those AV patterns. So that will be your first indication. And then what you'll do is provide a cover test or perform a cover test in those position, comparing the movement and the size of the deviation between those positions. You can then proceed to measuring the deviation, which is required if you go down the management um, road in terms of surgical management of the patient, but also it can clinically define whether the patient ha does have a pathological V pattern, for instance, or a uh, physiological V pattern. So you can use tests like a prism cover test in primary up and down gaze, or you can use a synoptophore in primary up and down gaze. Now, when we're looking at AV patterns and measuring AP patterns, it is recommended that you do this in 30 degrees up gaze and 30 degrees down gaze. So when you're assessing the patient with synoptophore, take it up right up to 30 degrees if you're specifically looking at measuring the AV pattern and bring it down 30 degrees. For the prism cover test, try and get your patient into the most extreme gaze you can in up and down gaze. Also, it's conventional to assess the uh, AV pattern in the distance. So usually you will be performing the prism cover test using a chin down position so that you can uh, measure the up gaze and a chin up position so you can measure down gaze. Okay, here we have a patient um, who has been assessed on the synoptophore, and we have the subjective angle of the patient in primary position as um, 10 diopters with a right on left of 5. 
We've got two diopters with a right on left of one diopter in up gaze and 18 diopters with a right on left of eight diopters in down gaze. So if we compare uh, up gaze and down gaze, which have been performed in 30 degrees up and 30 degree down gaze, we can see that we have a significant change in the horizontal deviation. We actually have a 16 prism doctor difference between the esotropia in up and down gaze. So it just meets the criteria for pathological V pattern. And this is a V eso, as we see in primary position, we have an esotropia. And what is happening to this esotropia is it's decreasing in up gaze and increasing in down gaze. Okay, so this is a patient with a V eso that can be diagnosed through the measurements of the um, the deviation in those three positions on the synoptophore. Now here is a list of a few more clinical investigations that could relate to AV patterns and are of interest to you when you're assessing a patient with an alphabet pattern. Now I've included ocular movements here again um, as it's not only about looking at what is happening in prior position up and down gaze, but if we want to try and detect the cause of the alphabet pattern, what we need to do is look for underactions and overactions of the cyclovertical muscles. Underactions or overactions of the cyclovertical muscles are usually the reason why we have an alphabet pattern and particularly an AV pattern. Now I'll talk to you more about this when we do the uh, when you watch the video on uh, the etiology of AV patterns, but your assessment of ocular movements is critical to determining if one of the cyclovertical muscles is the cause of the AV pattern that you're detecting. Now you're aware that the HES chart can also be utilised to detect AV patterns. Generally this is utilised as supporting evidence that the alphabet pattern is present and more often you'll actually have a PCT in primary up and down gaze as part of your clinical investigation of an alphabet pattern. But clearly the HES chart will support your ocular movement findings and your cover test or PCT examination. I also have here the assessment of binocular functions and uh, the field of BSV. These are not critical in the diagnosis of an AV pattern. The critical element to the diagnosis of the AV pattern is the uh, measurement of that deviation between primary up and down gaze. But these are supplementary tests that can assist you when you're managing a patient with an AV pattern. So in terms of binocular functions, you want to know that the patient has the potential for binocular functions um, if you are to operate on this patient. So in the young boy we saw earlier, we want to confirm that in up gaze the patient has um, uh, BSV so that if an operation is to occur, we can inform the patient of the likelihood of a functional outcome in primary position. Okay, the field of BSV can also be utilised to compare pre and post-op outcomes and to show the patient how you moved the area of BSV into the prior position and towards down gaze in the instance of the young boy. If you look at the young boy, we know that this patient is likely to have double vision here and double vision here, so in prior position and in down gaze, and likely to have BSV in the position of up gaze. So if you were to actually map this area of BSV, what you would find is an area of BSV in up gaze and diplopia from a certain point um, around primary position to down gaze. And so postoperatively what you want is to move the area of BSV to not only include up gaze, but to also include primary position and down gaze. Now down gaze is a particularly um, problematic position because we use down gaze a lot in reading activities and in a lot of activities we do eating etc we often use down gaze. So down gaze is a position we really want to um, try and improve as well as primary. Here I have an image of a HES chart. I just wanted to bring back your attention to how to utilise the HES chart in supporting your um, hypothesis that there is a, or your diagnosis that there is an AV pattern. And the way we do this is we generally try to utilise the 30 um, degree um, assessment if we can. So the 30 degree field. So what we want to compare is this position here and this position here. So 30 degrees in up gaze and 30 degrees in down gaze. It's not very easy for us to do this because I'm actually not sure which of these plots is plotting that particular position here as it's an incomplete, um, as it's an incomplete 
his chart. However, we can see in the inner 15 degrees that there is the commencement of a V pattern here with the slanting of the um, with the slanting of the Hess chart. And if we just take 15 degrees for a moment, this is up gaze and this is down gaze 15 degrees. We have a 5, 10, 15 degree ET and up gaze and a 5, 10, 15, 20, 23, 24 degree ESO in down gaze. And so we see the beginnings of a V ESO here. And this will probably be more pronounced in the uh, 30 degree positions, but again, a little bit difficult to do in this particular instance. And we can see here that Anthons and Davis has indicated that this is a bilateral six with a uh, V pattern diagnosed. Now, generally, when I look at HES charts, I will um, take the V pattern from the primary deviation. So uh, in this instance, the primary deviation of the smaller field is the right eye, which is why I was measuring off the right eye there. Finally, I just want to bring your attention to the significance of alphabet patterns. And they are important because they will influence the surgical management of the patient. So if, for instance, a patient has a fourth nerve palsy and a V pattern or an alphabet pattern, then considerations will need to be made as to what surgery will be performed to influence the um, area of BSV and to get the best outcome for your patient in terms of alignment. The other um, usefulness of detecting an AV pattern is that it can give you supporting evidence for particular diagnoses. So for instance, we'll learn soon that bilateral fourth nerve palsies often have large V patterns. So where you suspect there may be a bilateral fourth, if you also have a large V pattern in your clinical findings, then this is supporting evidence that you do have a, or you're likely to have a bilateral fourth. Okay, another uh, one, another example is an A pattern in infantile esotropia. We talked about this briefly last semester, um, but generally speaking, a DVD, a patient with a, a dissociated vertical divergence, usually has an A pattern, whereas a patient with an inferior oblique overaction usually has a V pattern. So where you're trying to distinguish whether a patient has an IO plus or a DVD, the A or V pattern detection can assist you to perhaps conclude or diagnose that it's the DVD rather than the IO overaction or vice versa. Okay, another example, we haven't done Brown syndrome yet, but uh, you will soon learn about uh, the differential diagnosis between inferior oblique pauses and a Brown syndrome. And AV pattern detection assists in um, providing supporting clinical evidence that it's either a Brown's or an IO palsy, which we'll see soon in subsequent videos. Okay, so alphabet patterns we need to know about so we can manage them as required, if, if required. And then also they can assist to provide a clinical picture of a particular diagnosis or provide supporting evidence for a particular diagnosis. Okay, so finally, the key components of the clinical investigation of a patient with um, an alphabet pattern is firstly ocular movements. On ocular movements, you will be able to detect the AV pattern. So when you assess the patient in primary up and down gaze, you will be able to detect upon observation whether you have an alphabet pattern. For further confirmation, you would proceed to doing a cover test in each of those positions and obviously measuring um, the deviation in prior position up and down gaze. And that could be using, for instance, PCT or, or synoptophore. And finally, the abnormal head posture is important. Having a look to see where the abnormal head posture is being utilized because of the alphabet pattern. And this will also uh, influence surgical management or decisions as to whether uh, the patient warrants uh, having a, a surgical uh, procedure undertaken. If, for instance, you have a really large uh, abnormal head posture, this would warrant surgical intervention. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.